Good morning, and welcome to the Shack and First Monday Morning Minute. Hi, I'm Dr. Todd Shatkin, and welcome to this Monday Morning Minute. Today I want to talk to you about how to handle medically compromised patients. You may be concerned about doing mini implants or any kind of implants on patients who are on steroids, who have diabetes, who are on a whole host of medications, uh, or maybe they're on blood thinners, things like that. It's very important to know your patient, to understand what's going on with that patient. Are they on different medications? What do the medications do for them? And how could that affect the outcome of your procedure? And one of the things that's great about the mini dental implants is it's a very minimally invasive procedure. You see, the term mini, although we always think of it as a size, in my mind, and, and what I try to portray to our patients is Mini doesn't just mean size, it means it's minimally invasive, there's minimal time involved to have the procedure done, minimal office visits, minimal pain, and minimal cost. So mini can connotate a number of different things. In the context of the surgical procedure, it's a minimally invasive procedure. And because of that, people who take certain medications can still have this procedure done. You see, steroids, for example, uh, they interfere with the autoimmune system. They make you immune suppressed, and that's how they work. But at the same time, they cause people to heal at a slower rate. But the great thing about mini implants is you're not relying on the body's ability to heal very much. With a conventional implant, you have to make a flap, you make osteotomies in the bone, you traumatize the bone, and then you rely on the body's ability to heal. With the mini implants, we don't do any of that. So mini implants heal much more rapidly. So patients who are on steroids, patients, patients who take certain medications, patients that are diabetic, they can all have the mini implant procedure performed very efficiently and very safely, and they will still heal very normally. So you don't really have to worry about your patients who are on steroids for mini implants. Now let's talk about blood thinners, for example. There's an awful lot of different blood thinners out there and you need to learn which ones are out there because they change all the time. But for example, let's talk about warfarin or, or uh, um, somebody who's on Coumadin, that's a warfarin product, um, or Plavix, for example, or even just baby aspirin. Those are all types of blood thinners. And you'll ask your patient, are you taking a blood thinner? They'll say no, and you'll later find out that they take baby aspirin every day. Well, they are on blood thinners because baby aspirin is a blood thinner and it will cause an increase in bleeding. Now, if you're extracting teeth or you're making a flap or you're doing invasive surgery, you've got to talk to the patient's physician about the possibility of reducing the amount of blood thinners or cutting it out for four or five days prior to surgery and a couple days after. But if you're doing just straightforward mini implants without any surgery, you're making a little tiny pilot hole in the gum you thread the implants in for like a denture stabilization, you don't need to worry about the blood thinners. You can do the procedure, as soon as that implant goes in the bone, and it, it will stop any bleeding. So yeah, when you make your pilot hole, you might get a little bleeding. As soon as you plug it up with the implant, the bleeding stops. So don't be concerned about blood thinners with non-surgical mini implant procedures. If you're doing surgery, you need to be uh, cautious and talk to the doctor and see uh, if and when you can stop those blood thinners. So. Uh, the bottom line is, mini implants are much less invasive, much less of a procedure than conventional implants, and in 95% of the time, the patient can, can continue to take the medications they're on. There's very little risk of any problem with patients who have diabetes or taking steroids or blood thinners with mini implants, unless you're doing a more invasive procedure. I hope this helps you understand the um, medical compromised patient, and we're always here to answer your questions if you have a specific patient that you want to talk about. It's good to be here, and I'll see you on the next Monday Morning Minute. Thank you, Dr. Shacken, for that very valuable information. You know, we get a lot of calls across the street at Shacken First on that very topic. So thank you very much. It was very, very helpful. I would also like to thank all the dentists that came to our intro mini and mono implant course last weekend here in Buffalo. It was an absolute phenomenal success. We had Dr. Shacken placing, uh, he did live surgery. 
He placed a lot of minis. He placed a lot of monos. And uh, I think everybody gathered a lot of information on how successful they can be placing small diameter one piece implants. I would like everyone to know that we're heading down to Houston, Texas for the ADA. And we'll be there from the 13th through the 15th of October. Our booth number is 1309. So we will have demo implants with us. We'll let you place some implants at our booth with our surgical motor. And uh, Dr. Shacken will be giving lectures at the booth. And he will also be lecturing on Thursday and Friday at the main stage. So if you're down in the Houston area or you plan on going to the ADA, please stop by our booth to say hello. And we'd love to meet you. And then we're back to Buffalo for our two-day intro course on mini and mono dental implants. It'll be Friday, the 28th of October, and Saturday, the 29th of October. And keep in mind, if you sign up before the end of September, you will receive a $200 discount. So we're talking $795 for 16 CE credits. It's a great deal, and it's a great way to expand revenue at your dental practice. And then our final course of the year will be our advanced mini and mono dental implant course. It'll be held November 17th, Thursday the 17th, Friday the 18th, and Saturday the 19th. So Thursday and Friday will be all implants. Dr. Shacken will be doing live surgery on Friday and will be lecturing on Thursday. On Saturday, Dr. Samuel Shacken, Dr. Todd Shacken's brother, will be teaching general dentists on how to do Botox. It is a phenomenal way to make sure your restorations are working the way they need to. And if we can calm down that masseter muscle with Botox injections, it's very, very advantageous. So if you haven't learned about Botox, give us a call and we'll be happy to have you come on the 19th of, of November. Thanks for joining us on this Monday Morning Minute. I hope you have an excellent week placing mini and mono implants. And don't forget, you need anything, you call one 4 shacken or visit our website, itsshackenfirst.com. We'll see you next week on the Monday Morning Minute.